So welcome to Computer Science 1437. Uh, this is called Programming Fundamentals 2. Uh, my name is George Driscoll. I am going to be your instructor for this uh, eight-week course. I've got uh, a couple things planned for us. Uh, I'm going to begin with a very short PowerPoint presentation. If you are not aware, this is an eight week course. It's going to go pretty fast. Uh, if you get stuck, ask for help. The main means of communications between yourself and myself is going to be email messages. I will try to provide some kind of a lecture uh, once a week, every week. You'll see this at the bottom of the, uh, uh, the North Lake or the Dallas uh, website. Uh, please, some of you, some of you may have problems uh, such as uh, food problems. You may have problems such as housing problems. You may have other problems. Okay, what I would encourage you to do is to take advantage of these services. All right, uh, the care team is uh, one of the one of the groups of people that's out there to try to help you complete this successfully. Okay, uh, Title Nine uh, has to do with. Uh, 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 harassment uh, and all kinds of other stuff. If you have some kind of a Title IX problem, there is a Title IX coordinator. And again, start with the care team. There's not much I can do for you in the way of providing food or housing, okay? There is a student code of conduct, we'll get to that and so forth, okay? We want you to be good consumers. If you fall into any of these categories, if you're a veteran, if you happen to be an international student, if you have a disability, okay, if you require or want financial aid, if you want career counseling, please take advantage of these services, okay? They are there for you. There's a whole TED talk on why and why why is the most important to ask yourself, okay? Uh, for some of you, you know, this is going to be a, a very primitive uh, programming course, all right? I will tell you that programming is a very valuable skill. It can lead to a very well-paying career. What you're not here to do, please pay attention, is you're not here to copy and paste other people's solutions, okay? You're here to learn how to solve problems using a computer program, okay? Along those lines, we want you to do the work. We assign you these problems. We ask you to, to create these solutions because we want you to learn how to do this. We want you to create this valuable skill in yourself, all right? Do your own work. That's all we ask you to do. And that is honestly the very best way for you to, uh, to learn this stuff, okay? Some of you are gonna find the course challenging, all right? Others will discover a path to success. You may be tempted to ask for help from someone else. This is probably the worst thing that you can do for yourself, okay? For a couple of reasons. You're cheating yourself out of the uh, learning, all right? The other thing is that in terms of the student code of conduct, if I find that two students have turned in the exact same thing, both of them get zero. Both of them are gonna get zero on that assignment or all of them are gonna get zero on that assignment, okay? Now. In baseball, three strikes and you're out. This is not baseball. If you commit a second offense of the academic uh, code, uh, you're going to get an F in the course. Unfortunately for some people, that occurs toward the end of the course, all of the time and effort, all the money you've spent, you get a zero for the course. There's another problem. Recently, we've been asked to report academic dishonesty to the, uh, the Dean of Student Engagement. There is a real possibility that academic dishonesty of any form, collusion, plagiarism, buying, selling, whatever, would create for you a disciplinary record. This disciplinary record will follow you uh, to the rest of the colleges that you ever want to go to, okay? We take our academic standards very seriously. Uh, when you take your transcript with you, 
we want it to mean something, that it came from North Lake campus of the Dallas College, okay? We do not want you to have a discipline record that, that follows you, okay? So how should you learn? What is the best source of material? This particular book is where most of the questions are based on, absolutely 99%. It's a very rich source of good examples, okay? The examples in the book are in good form. The book is your best source. The book literally has all the answers in it, okay? So who determines what grade you get? The answer is very simple, you do. All the quizzes, all the exams are submitted by the computer, automatically graded. Each assignment and all the programming projects have grading criteria associated with them. You will have a very good idea of what you're gonna get on an assignment by looking at those grading criteria before you submit it. Test your work before you turn it in. I'm gonna test it. You're gonna send me any Java source code files that you create or modify. I will use those files, I'll look at them, I will execute them. So if you haven't, if you just think it's a good idea to come up with some code and submit it, you may be disappointed, okay? Here's how we figure out your grade. This is in the syllabus. Uh, the lab assignments, they amount for about 25% of your grade. Programming projects, another 25% of your grade. Quizzes, 25%, and finally tests, 25%. These are the components of your overall grade. Syllabus contains the policy that will be used for grading uh, assignments that were submitted late, okay? Uh, basically, if you submit it one day late, 10% off. Two days late, 20% off. Three days late, 30% off. Don't bother submitting it four or more days off. It will be a zero in the Grade Center, okay? Uh, people are, are wondering why we don't use Zoom. Uh, yesterday, Zoom was down for about two and a half hours. Someone told me, I have not confirmed this, but someone told me that uh, the uh, server that holds all the passwords in Zoom is located in China. Uh, don't count on technology being available 24 seven. Some of you discovered that Blackboard is not up all the time. My suggestion comes down to this. Do not wait until the last minute to submit your work. The, uh, you may be ready to go five minutes before midnight and everything's down or your system's down or something that's not working right, okay? Please uh, try to get ahead of yourself. In fact, if you wanna get slightly ahead of yourself in, in, in working the assignments and so forth, that's great. I will try to provide lectures that help you uh, complete everything uh, and, and learn. The idea here is to learn problem solving. You're gonna learn problem solving. You're gonna learn the specifics of a programming language, but you're going to go beyond what you learned in 1436, which was the prerequisite to get here. Information to contact me. Oh, that title at the top is wrong. Sorry, 1437. We're in 1437, I apologize. Uh, this, is, this is how to get in touch with me. Uh, it's, in, it's in Blackboard. There's, there's no, this is not a problem. I, I, I really try to be responsive to the email messages. It is the primary way in which we're going to communicate with each other. Uh, I will make available office hours. The problem is I can't sit around 15 hours a week waiting for someone to call. I've got other things to do. I've got grading to do. I have other classes to teach. I have yard work. I have to take the trash out, okay? So uh, please send me an email if you have a specific question. And generally for an online class, if someone asks a question and it's a really good question, I will try to share the answer with all the other class members in the class. If we were in a classroom, and someone asked a question, everybody in the classroom would hear the answer. So we'll try to do that for you whenever we can, all right? I will come up with some form of office hours. I'm not sure how that's gonna work. Uh, and uh, it's, 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 it's going to be, we're gonna try to work with you to get this, uh, get this done, okay? Just because it was simple for me to explain the course to you, it does not mean that it's gonna be easy for you to do it, okay?
Okay, last slide in this PowerPoint presentation. I do have two of them. Last slide in this one is uh, get access to the book. Log into Blackboard. Click on Learning Materials. You should have access to an electronic copy of the book. If you don't, send me an email right away. I've got uh, resources I can send you to. I can't do anything about it directly, but I can direct your question to someone who can, okay? Read the book. Make study a habit. Pick the same time of day to read the book. But don't be afraid to read ahead, okay? This is a suggestion I read about. It seems to be a good one. Read a little bit, stop. Get a blank sheet of paper out. Summarize in a sentence or two or three what you just read. It seems to help solidify what you've just read. If you don't have a flash drive, get a flash drive. I would, I would like you to get a calendar and put all the due dates for all the assignments for this course. And if you're taking other courses, put everything on one calendar. Every day you should be looking at the calendar. That should be your to-do list and uh, should help you plan. If you discover that the perfect storm is happening in two weeks, when everybody in the world wants you to submit something, you can plan ahead for that. All right. Next on the agenda is a tour of the Blackboard course, OK? Hang on just a second. The only downside of, of Collaborate is the it's a kind of clunky to shift from one um, thing to another. Here we go. This should do it. All right. So this is what you should see when you log into Blackboard. You should see our start here. Uh, what I've done is to break a the sections on the left into three areas. At the top, we've got start here, syllabus, instructor, all this stuff that you should be reading right now, OK? If you've never taken an online course, click on Ready for Online. The required materials are in here, and so on and so forth. Uh, here's how to get in touch with me. It's, a, it's an easy way to do it. You'll probably have my email locked in somewhere, OK? If you haven't looked at the syllabus, here's a chance to do it. In the middle, weekly schedule, the learning materials, programming projects in your grades. This is where you're going to spend probably most of the time. You're going to churn from the weekly schedule. You're going to go into the weekly schedule, see what's due, how to do it, what's required, check the book and learning materials, and programming projects. The programming projects we have pulled out, because they span more than just one week, we pulled them out. And so for example, if I click on this, we'll see that we have three programming projects, OK? We've got due dates for each of the three. We've got all the information you need to create and submit a project one and two and three in this particular folder, OK? So if I click on Learning Materials, I'm going to see a bunch of stuff that you may not see. If you don't see the book, let me know, all right? So weekly schedule, week one, week two, we talked about the chapters we're going to cover. We talked about how things are going to be. Uh, at the end here, we, we may compress some of this. Uh, in a perfect world, I don't have to try to introduce new material during the last week of the course. It's a time for reflection, review, for finishing up things, and preparing for the final exam. Uh, we don't have that luxury in an eight-week course. We do have a midterm. The midterm marks about halfway through the course. And from there, we take a kind of a departure. And we go from basic programming with not, not a whole lot of object-oriented stuff to the second half of the course where we will use object-oriented program completely. We'll talk about classes and objects very specifically. We'll discuss inheritance and so forth. Exceptions, advanced input, output. Um, there are some helpful links here. Oh, that's not, that's not the one I want, sorry. Uh, supplemental links. Uh, this particular person is not currently employed uh, by Dallas College. If you want any tutoring, if you need any questions asked, please contact me, all right? If you would like to explore some Java tutoring websites, uh, you can. We've got some example source code. We've got uh, all kinds of good stuff in here, all right? All right. We're going to shift gears now 
And what we're going to do, let's get back to this. I'm going to stop sharing that application and I'm going to share another application screen. What I'm going to share is the, uh, the NetBeans uh, startup screen, okay? So you should be looking at NetBeans. It's starting up. Uh, this is great. I want to create a new program. So what I want to do is I want to go here. I want to create a new project. I'll click on this icon. And I want to create a Java, not Java FX, not Maven, not NetBeans, none of this. Java, top choice. I want to create a Java application. Uh, later on, we're going to show you an existing source. We'll do that as the second example today. It's going to help you get the first assignment done. Next thing I want to do is to give it uh, a, a, a name. We're going to call it My Hello World Program. If you've never used this integrated development environment before, make sure you find out where this stuff is being saved, okay? On my computer, it's in the C drive and the users folder under owner, within that under documents and within that under NetBeans projects, okay? All right. So we've got a, a startup program here. All I wanna do is uh, I just want to say hello world, all right? I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the system, which is a class, a set of our objects. Within that class, I'm going to use out, all right? Now, what you're looking at is one of the advantages of object-oriented programming. In object-oriented programming, the, um, the methods and the fields that have been made public are exposed. And so I want out, okay? In addition to that, I want a particular method. The method that I want to use is print line, okay? I want to print a string. And print line has the advantage of it's going to display a line and then it's going to do carriage return line feed, all right? So here we go. We're going to give it a string literal. And we're good to go, okay? So I've got a working program here that can be run. I'm going to come up here. Sometimes what I'll do is I will clean and build just in case something went wrong because I made a whole bunch of changes. So I'll just clean and build. I got a message at the bottom, which tells me that build was successful. This little green right pointing triangle is going to allow me to run the project. All we're going to see in the output area at the bottom is hello world. It worked, OK? Now, if you thought that was clumsy and you're looking for a better way to do it, let me get rid of this for a second and show you what are the, some of the shortcuts that are available in NetBeans, okay? I'm going to type in S-O-U-T, which is a heck of a lot shorter than system.out.println. All I need to do now is touch the tab key, and it expands to system.out.println. All right. It'll just run that guy. It'll recompile it and run it. And it says, hello, world. Where did, I, where did I get that? How did I know S out was going to work? For you, go to help. Go to the keyboard shortcuts card. And what you'll see is a two-page document that you can print or save. And it's going to have all that stuff in it, OK? There's a whole bunch of stuff here that's really good. So let's see, where is S-O-U-T? Right here, S-O-U-T, system out, print one. So real nice, uh, it's there for your help, all right? One of the things that, that uh, people will sometimes do is that they'll, they'll kind of mess up the formatting. And so there are other shortcut keys that you can perform. I can grab everything, uh, Shift, Alternate, F, 
is going to reformat things in a nice little acceptable style. Later on, we're going to want to uh, learn how to submit assignments. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to do is I'd like to submit, I'd like to show the code that created it and successful output. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hit print screen. When you hit print screen, nothing really happens, but a copy of the screen image has been saved to the uh, to the system clipboard. Okay. All right, let's come back. We're done with this. Hang on a second. And we'll come back. I've got one more example I want to show you later, okay? Um, but for now, I've got one more uh, very brief PowerPoint presentation to show you. Oh, sorry, wrong. Hang on. And we're going to take a look at, uh, real brief, it is not my job to read the book to you. That's your job. Read chapter one. There's a bunch of good stuff in it, okay? They talk about Java. They talk about it. All of you, all of you should be able to program. The prerequisite for taking this course is Computer Science 1436 or its equivalent. And math 1314 college algebra or higher you should have uh, the logic figured out you should know what the basics of programming are all about initially we're going to concentrate on on differences differences between a language like c plus plus and uh, java it's not a big deal we want you to get into the, the structure of uh, of of java okay turns out that Pretty much every programming language has four characteristics, okay? Every programming language deals with certain data types. For us, uh, I'm happy to have us simplify the different data types. There's a ton of different data types. You're welcome to read about them in the book. For whole numbers, we're going to use integers. For floating point numbers, we're going to use double. Make life simple. We're not here to concentrate on the very fine minutia, the details, okay? Otherwise, we're going to worry about the ants and the elephants are going to run us over, okay? So integers are fine and doubles are fine. Yes, doubles take up more space. Let's extravagantly use storage. we got plenty, okay? The operations that a language is capable of doing, addition, subtraction, multiplication, all kinds of different operations are possible, okay? Each language comes with reserved words. If you're used to calling them keywords, that's fine. The syntax is where all these elements are, are put together. You follow the rules of the language uh, and you take uh, re respect the reserved words. Respect words are only going to be uh, interpreted by the uh, compiler as the reserved words. Use the operations to perform useful things and so forth, okay? What is Java? What are the things that describe Java? Java is an object-oriented language, okay? Hang on just a second. All right. Object-oriented is a, a different way to look at the world, a different way to program, okay? Object-oriented means that we're going to describe objects. We're going to have basically simulation. Uh, one of the easy ways to think about object-oriented programming is that we're going to simulate, simulate with computer programming code, real-world objects, okay? Now, that uh, comparison falls pretty short, pretty quick. So don't, it's not going to carry you through to all the advanced things that you're eventually going to do with Java. But for us, it's a great way to start, okay? Uh, case sensitive, uh, some languages are not case sensitive. Java is very case sensitive. Your variables that you name, the identifiers that you name are case sensitive. And uppercase uh, as the first letter is generally, generally the lowercase is the first letter. That's a convention. If you use uppercase first letter, fine, just be consistent. Strongly typed means just that. If you've ever typed, if you've ever dealt with Python, you'll find that it's a dynamically typed language. Java is very strongly typed. You must, you absolutely must 
declare the data type of a variable before you can do anything with it, all right? And again, I'm not going to read the book to you, but I am going to refer to page 31, okay? Because it's got some good stuff in there. Uh, not not suggestions, but uh, but real real stuff, okay? In our example, we did system.out.println hello world, all right? System is the class. Out is an object that was created from that class definition. Print line is simply a member of that class, okay? So what we can do is we can think of system as the overall definition of this object, okay? Out is a particular instance of an object. It's a noun. It's a thing. Print line is a verb. It's action that can be taken, okay? And again, this idea, this way to look at the object-oriented programming world is fine at this point, but it won't, it won't hold up very much longer for us. We later on, we'll get into some very abstract ideas where uh, you're going to want to go beyond uh, noun and adverb and, 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 and so forth, all right? Hello world is a string literal. It will literally be stored as hello world. When I say uh, index equals five, five is a numeric literal. The compiler will create a, a, a place in memory and store five in there so that it can execute that assignment statement. Again, just some reading suggestions. Uh, you may or may not read everything. Uh, you probably should. The Probably the best suggestion I ever had for learning a language was to type in, physically type in, all the example programs in the book. Uh, if you make the time to do that, you're going to learn how to use the integrated development environment that you choose. Doesn't matter whether it's NetBeans or Eclipse, okay? Remember, when you submit an assignment to me, I want the Java source code files. I want the Java source code files that you created or the files that you modified, okay? In some of the cases, you're going to be given a file, and you're going to make some changes to it. If you create or change a Java source code file, I want you to submit that to me. I also have some requests for uh, screenshots, and, and we'll see those in individual. Not every assignment does that. Uh, variables and literals, there is a distinction. Uh, rules for naming identifiers. An identifier is like a variable name or a class name. Primitive data types, not everything in Java is an object, okay? There are a few things that are primitive data types. Later on, when we get to the, uh, the end of the course, we're going to find uh, uh, classes that can only operate on things that are objects. And so we can't use an integer. We can't use a double. We've got to do something else. But we'll get to that. The math class is just page 62. The string object is our first real example of an object. If I said string name equals, quote, Joe Bag of Donuts, I've created an object, OK? What we're going to discover is name is a reference variable. It's going to refer to the object. The object itself is Joe Bag of Donuts, that string that exists in memory, OK? I want you to read about scope. It's, it's, it's a very simple, very basic idea. It's very important to understand what scope is, OK? In terms of coding conventions, I demonstrate that alternate shift F, which is a uh, simply a way to reformat your code so that it looks right. You guys get a little crazy with it sometimes, and it becomes difficult to see what's wrong because it's scattered all over the place. Select all, control A, alternate shift F if you're in NetBeans. I'm sure Eclipse has something like this, and it'll, it'll, you'll be able to see uh, with the indentation uh, what's going on. The scanner class is how we accept input from the keyboard. Uh, it's begin on page 85, and it's uh, uh, page 87 has got some of the methods associated with the scanner class, okay? If you're coming from C++, uh, you've got includes and so, but the import statement is what we use in Java. Occasionally, like probably the first time you use scanner, it's going to be mad at you. But if you'll hold down the alternate key and press the enter key, it'll provide a suggestion. And that suggestion is probably going to be, oh, by the way, did you forget to include an import statement? And so forth. So you'll see that uh, right away. Uh, this is kind of 
a problem that we need to worry about. When you mix calls to next line with calls to other scanner methods, you're going to be aware of some of the how, how they work differently, whether the new line character at the end of a record gets eaten up or not, whether it's ignored and so on and so forth. OK, so look at page 88. You're going to maybe dog ear that page because later on when you get into trouble, you're going to want to come back and, um, and, and this will help you figure it out. Uh, you don't have to use the J option pane uh, to, I can see that O should be capitalized, I'm sorry. But take a look at page 93. It's a way to interact with the user with a very nice uh, dialog box that pops up. It's not required, but we've got a nice complete description. If you'll go to supplemental material, I think is where you'll find appendix I, and it's got a really uh, much more complete example and description of how to use that J option pane dialog box. At the end of each chapter, the author provides this common errors to avoid. I, I suggest that you take a look at it. If it didn't occur to you that this was a problem that you might encounter, they'll point this out. Okay, the last uh, screen on this particular PowerPoint, and then we'll go to uh, just a, a couple more examples and we'll try to open it up for questions. We did print screen. Well, let's open up a document that's compatible with Microsoft Word, okay? So I'm going to have to, and let's just, we'll, we'll terminate this guy because we're pretty much done with it. I'm going to share an application. Uh, I want to get to a document. And I'm now inside of a blank document, okay? Well, let's do control V. Let's, let's, let's do what we're supposed to do. This is the assignment, okay? So, so this, I gotta put my name. And that's not big enough. We wanna make sure we see it. I like the Vergana font. And we're gonna say, uh, whatever. OK, let's hit control V. And what we're going to get is a copy of what was on the screen earlier. Now you're going to say, how is Mr. Driscoll going to possibly be able to read this? OK, well, it's really very simple. Uh, if you send me this, I can go to view and I can uh, zoom it in and I can go to 200 percent and I can I can make it as big as I want to to make sure I can see the code and the thing. Uh, so we've got. So this is a, just a great, easy way to do this. If you want to, you can put all the screenshots on one document. Send me a single document. I'll take a look at it. Remember, uh, you do not have to package up the, uh, the uh, projects. What I do want to see are any Java source code files that you create or that you modify. All right. Back to, I hope, here we go. All right, last but not least, we want to show you uh, one more example. I'm going to, oh gosh, let's see if it's still there. Hang on. Ah, here we go. So we're going to do, we're going to start a program. We're going to start a program from known sources. Remember, uh, when I went to, and let's go back now, like really get complicated here, okay? Let's get a, we're going to come back to NetBeans, but what I want to do is I want to um, I hope this is the right one. No, this is not it. Here we go. So we were down here in supplemental links. Let's go up to the weekly schedule. Let's go to week one. Within week one, we've got big picture course level outcomes that we hope to get from doing week one. We have some very specific out, outcomes that we hope to achieve during this week. All right, here's here's what you're supposed to do to achieve these outcomes. Read chapters one and two. Download and install Java development in NetBeans. Okay, uh, complete lab assignment one, and do the review questions yourself. All right, so let's take a look at uh, lab assignment one. Uh, we have made available to you the PowerPoint presentations. If if you like them, if you if you. If you they're not a substitute for reading the book, okay? 
So this folder contains the instructions and files you'll need to complete lab assignment one. Let's see what's inside. Here's some instructions. Here's a couple files. I have taken the liberty ahead of time of downloading these files, okay? Uh, oh, poop. I should have given you some instructions as to how to download these files. I'll have to fix that, okay? But what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to submit a word processing document that's got all the screenshots in it, okay? We want three instances of you successfully running the um, the pay program. And then we want you to run, uh, after you fix the sales tax program, we want you to run that, okay? So I've taken the liberty of downloading these files. We're going to stop sharing this. And I'm going to go back to uh, NetBeans. And so now what I want to do is I want to come here. I, I want to start a project, okay? I'm a new project never been created before. We start a new project. It's going to be a Java program, but it's going to be a Java project with existing sources. All right. I'll try to go through this slowly, but we have also made available a document that walks you through this as process as well. So we're going to create a project using existing sources. Super. The existing sources are the two files that I downloaded from Java. Okay. So this is going to be GD assignment number one, whatever you want to call it. I'm giving it a big fancy name because I, I don't want to run into a conflict here with a name that's already been out there. Okay. Okay, great. This is my, my project name. This is where it's going to be stored. Everything is fine here. Let's go on to the next. And if you want it stored somewhere else, click browse. Let's see what's next. Okay. All right. There are two questions here. We really only need to answer the first one, the one on top. We need to tell NetBeans where the source code is. Okay. So I want to add a folder. And I put it on my computer. And what I did was I put it on the C drive and 2020 fall and COSC 1437 and example files. This is where I put it. I really just need to highlight the folder that contains the files. OK, so let me move this out of the way for a second. The question that we're answering is find the folder that contains the files. I've done that. I click on open. Life is good. Not much happened, but we're OK. We're not going to do the test package, so we're good to go to the next uh, screen on this helper. Well, it looks like it worked OK because here's pay.java and salestext.java. OK. If I put a bunch of stuff in there and wanted to include or exclude files, we could do that. But these are the two files that I want to be involved in this project. OK. Now we look over here. Let me clean some of this up, OK? Okay. I'm looking at GD. Those are my initials. Lab assignment number one. I'm looking at the source packages. Let's open this up a little bit. Well, there's pay.java and salestax.java. Well, it's it's trying to tell me that there's a problem with one or more of the source packages. It's trying to tell me that the sales tax program has got something wrong with it. Okay. Well, let's do the pay program first. I'm going to double click on pay.java. I'll see it in the editor window. Here's my scanner, keyboard equals new scanner system dot in. Uh, I've created a scanner object to read from the keyboard. Not lots of good uh, comments here. OK. So it's going to display prompts and it's going to correctly say, hey, if the hours were less than or equal to 40, your pay is going to be the hours times the rate. If it's greater than 40, because what's the logical opposite of less than or equal to? greater than, okay? I will have, I usually have a, an opportunity to stump students in class and I'll say, well, what's the logical opposite of greater than 90? And the correct answer is the logical opposite of greater than 90 is less than or equal to 90, okay? 
And we're programmers, we have to be very precise. We don't wanna leave out that one case where it's equal to. So less than or equal to 40, here's how you get paid. Otherwise, this is how you're gonna get paid, okay? So let's run the program. And we'll just click on the green triangle here. And the one I wanna use for the main is pay. See, there's two files in here, okay? Uh, one or more projects, yeah, it's okay. We're gonna run this one anyway. Now, remember to move your cursor down here. How many hours did I work? Well, I worked uh, 25 hours. And I got paid $40 an hour. So I earned $1,000 for that day's work, okay? So that's not bad. Next thing we want to do is we want to load salestax.java in there. I'm not going to do your homework for you, but you'll see this big red guy here and the squiggly red underline. Something is very bad. Something very bad is going on there, okay? Oops, here's another big problem here, all right? All right. Those represent what we call syntax errors. Those represent errors that you didn't, you didn't follow the rules of the road. You didn't follow the rules of the language, okay? This particular program not only has syntax errors, but it also has logic errors. And that's gonna be your assignment. When you're done, I want you to run this program under with three different examples and three different screenshots. Because you're going to modify the code, I wanna see a copy of the code. And we ask that because the screenshot that you take may not show the source code that I need to see to verify that you did this correctly and the output, okay? The other thing is, uh, if you don't send me the source code, I can't figure out what you did wrong and help you. All right, let's see. Okay, that is pretty much, Abdul, you got a question? Yes, so, um... For this lab, right? So we only have to use like this fix the error and then like submit it as a screenshot, right? Is that I'm sorry, say please say it again nice and slow for me, okay? I just turned the volume up a little. Uh so uh for this assignment, we only have to do is like fix the errors and then uh, just submit the screenshot, right? Okay. There are two prop there are two programs that you're gonna have to run. One is the pay program. I want you to run the pay program successfully for three cases, less than 40 hours, exactly equal to 40 hours, and greater than 40 hours. You need to take three screenshots and include that in the document that you submit. The second program is the sales tax program. You have syntax errors to fix and logic errors to identify and fix. When you've correctly got that program working, I want you to run it three times for three different examples. So you will have the Java source code to send to me that's corrected, and you'll have three examples of the successful execution of that, okay? So all of them is gonna be a screenshot, right? This. There are going to be six screenshots, three from the pay program, three from the sales tax program, plus a copy of a Java source code file that it, you changed because you're gonna have to make some changes to sales tax, okay? So yeah. when you submit this work, Make sure you can put all the screenshots in a single document if you want to, but there's going to be a second file. So when you get to the part where you submit, uh, don't, don't just add one file and submit, okay? Uh, let me talk about something else and then we'll, we'll turn you loose, okay? But the other thing is I have set up the assignments in such a way that if you discover that you only submitted the word processing document with the screenshots and you forgot to send me the Java code, you can submit that assignment again. You can submit that assignment again and again. You may submit an, you may submit an assignment and your mom comes to visit and you say, mom, look what I created. I created this great program and it fails. You may wanna redo it, figure out what's wrong and send it in again. That's fine, okay? Which means that I don't start grading your work until slightly after the due date. I don't get up at two o'clock in the morning, but uh, if the due date is a Tuesday, Wednesday morning, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a look at uh, what you submitted. Uh, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wait a couple of days to put zeros in because if you submit it one day late, 
you'll get uh, out of 90%. You'll get a minus 10% for late. Two days late, you're out of 80. Three days late, uh, 70. The fourth day, once something is late four days, it's not, not worth submitting. I'm going to give you zero. I'll put that in, okay? So let's see. So make sure you submit everything correctly. Make sure you uh, are very careful to, to put stuff in correctly, okay? Let me see. Oh, let's see. I've got a question in the chat. Thank you, Rosalind. That's a great way to do it, okay? Uh, on the version of NetBeans I install, there are three options, Java with Maven, Java with Gradle, Gradle and Java with Ant. Uh, if it works, I'll tell you what, Rosalind, if it works, that's great. Uh, NetBeans, I'm trying to think. I, I don't think it matters, okay? I think Java with Ant is certainly one way to go, all right? Let's get back. And Mateen, you've got a question. Go ahead. Yeah, um, it's more of a just helpful thing. If NetBeans won't let you open a project, um, so like start a new project, you, you have to, there's a, a link on Stack Overflow explaining how to fix that problem because it thinks you're using a different version of Java or something, and then it has to fix it. So if anyone needs that, I can post that link just to help well, them out if it's uh, happening. We're going to leave people uh, fix that themselves. The uh, the answer is uh, that you've got to install Java first, and then you install NetBeans, and that way NetBeans sees the version of Java. And that this is in the instructions in the um, resources uh, to install Java first and then install NetBeans. And that generally uh, you don't get this particular problem. But thank you very much, my team. That was a good hint. Okay. Abdul, you got a second question. Go ahead. Third question. It's okay. This is what this is for. Okay, so um, like basically, you're sorry, uh, is it? Are, are you? I, I I don't mean to insult you. Is Abdul? Is that acceptable yeah. to refer to yeah. you? That's yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so um, for NetBean, we need a uh, Java development kit, right? And then when I when when I try to download that, it's asking me like to basically sign in to Oracle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like that's right. You're going to yeah, you're going to basically create an account with Oracle, okay? And that's fine. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, they're not going to try to sell you anything. Uh, it doesn't expire, but it allows you to download Java. What happened over time is that um, the ownership of Java shifted, the licensing of of Java changed. Uh, they want you to identify yourself as a legitimate person. That's all that's going on. There's no privacy here or problems or anything. Uh, you don't have to open, you don't have to put a, a credit card in. So, uh, so I would yeah just go ahead and didn't do that okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this has been recorded. Uh, I'm going to make it available. The uh, the other thing I'm going to try to do I haven't figured out how to do it yet but I'm going to upload it to YouTube get some closed captioning put in so that we meet the uh, Americans for Disability Act uh, requirements for accessibility, okay? So that's my plan, and it's gonna take a little bit to get that done. The recording, it takes a while for the system. Uh, when I close this out and go look for it, it's probably 10 or 15 minutes before it's available. Any other questions? All right, now, if you have a question, send me an email. If you need office hours, send me uh, send me a request. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start by saying, when are you available? And if I'm available at the same time, we'll open up either a, a collaborative session like this or Teams or something else. We're not going to use Zoom. And maybe just an uh, exchange of emails will answer your question. Uh, my communication with you is these uh, once a week kind of a lecture. And then uh, finally, I'll communicate with you by my comments on your work. I will try to give you your money's worth in a programming course. I'm not just going to say you didn't do it right. I'll try to explain why what you did was wrong, give you an example of how to do it right. We want you to learn how to program. Again, do your own work, okay? That's really all you're supposed to do anyway. And this is a skill that we want you to acquire a skill that's going to last you for a good long time. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if there's no other questions, I'm going to stop the recording and shut down the session. 
and we'll see you again next week at the same time at the same place okay oh Mohammed uh, you have a question Mo uh, yes professor um, uh, yes Mohammed you can call me Mohammed um, I just wanted to say it's so good to have a live session like this uh, so uh, do we have another live session like this next week uh, we will have a session like this next week. My plan is to have one every week. Uh, we um, And you don't have to butter me up by telling me how good the session is. Thank you very much. It's okay. You can butter me up by, by, by studying, reading the book, working hard, getting good grades on it. Uh, okay. Give me one too. All right. I, did, I think, okay, maybe, maybe it wasn't uh, a hand, but someone had left the session. That's fine. And it's fine for you to go now. You don't have to stick around. We're done. Okay, thank, you. thank you very much. We'll, we'll see you next week for sure. And be sure to submit something. I've got to uh, certify your attendance. All right. I'm going to stop the recording.